So welcome to this unit on protocols. We are going to discuss how agents interact with each other. And there are patterns of message exchange which actually create higher level abstraction of communication between agents. And that's what we are going to do now. So what are protocols? Protocols are rules for sending and receiving messages. It is a way to program with agents. Examples of protocols is broadcasting messages to a group of agents or choosing one agent among others in the sense that all agents should agree which agent is chosen and the others that, uh, that are rejected. Uh, there is also interesting issues of protocols which are protocols can lead to a notion of deadlock where some agent can wait forever. We will discuss this later in this unit. So let us see how to implement a very simple protocol, which is a broadcast protocol. And what is it? When an agent gets a request, it wants to broadcast a message to a set of agents. And this is we can implement quite easily in our with our abstraction. So here is a procedure called broadcast. Here is a set of agents. And here is a message we want to send. We just send the message to every agent. You remember, this was, if A is an agent, M is a message, this will be a send operation to that agent. But let us take a more agent-oriented view. Instead of defining a procedure, we are going to define a broadcaster agent. A broadcaster agent is an agent if it gets a request to broadcast a message, it will broadcast that message to a set of other agents. So any agent that wants to broadcast, it sends the broadcast request to the broadcaster. So this was our original code, and now we work more in an agent-oriented fashion. So the first thing to do is to define the broadcaster transition function. We call it we call it BF. Here is a broadcaster transition function. It can accept two messages, an init message and a broadcast message. An init message basically change the set of agents that this broadcaster knows about. So the state of the agent consists of one single field and that field has the agent that, that it knows about. It can also get a broadcast message. This message is M here. And what it does for every agent in its set of agents that it knows about, it sends the message to the broadcaster. This is a state transition function. So the state is not changed here. And it will ignore all other messages. That's why we have this else statement. <coughs> so here is a broadcaster scenario just to get an idea about uh, to do things. We define first a browser agent. We call it browse f. What's a browser agent does? This is the state transition function of the browser agent. The browser agent, it basically does only one thing. To understand this properly, we have to understand what is the state of a browser agent. The state of the browser agent has a name and when it gets a message M, it browses the pair consisting of the name of the browser and the, the message. So here's an example. We create a broadcaster agent. This is the first thing, new agent, with state just empty at this time. Then we create a set of browser agents so here we are going to, to look to a construct that maybe you haven't seen before. This construct can be expressed in the functional sub-language of us, the declarative language of us. A construct that is similar in function to what is called comprehension in Python, but it has different syntax. So what it does for i between 1 and 10, it collects in a list what is written here. So what is written here will be an agent 
that has a name I. So the result here will be a set of agents. Each agent has a name, and that name is 1 to 10. And that agent is a browser agent. So a set of browser agents, basically. Here we have the broadcaster. We initialize it with a set of browser agents. And then we broadcast the message A, it's an atom, to the set of browser agents. You can take this code and run it for yourself to try to see what is going to happen. I will have in an extra unit showing you what uh, this as a programming uh, screenshot session.